You still here with your homeboy first, and this is the realest, most entertaining sports show in the game, and that is put it on something. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. And make sure y'all share this with all your partners. I'm talking to one man and one man only, and that's Coach Deion Sanders. But y'all feel free to listen. Coach, your 60 Minutes interview was spectacular, per usual. I've told America, and I'm going to keep on telling America, when it comes to charisma, when it comes to showmanship, when it comes to box office, only one athlete ever has what Deion Sanders has. Has what you have, coach, and that's Muhammad Ali. That's it. That's the list. That's the list. So I expected that. But in that interview, coach, it's the part that I got to focus on. It's the part that I need to address. And I'm going to address it. When asked about what you would do if a Power 5 school approached you, you said, and I quote, I'm going to have to entertain it. I'd be a fool not to. Coach, let me tell you, you, you're flat out wrong on that. You don't have to entertain it. It is not an imperative that you entertain it's not it's not coach and you definitely wouldn't be a fool not to why do i say that i say that because of what you said your mission is i say that because you said in that same interview that you were at jackson state because god called you collect and you accepted the charges So I'm going to tell you, Coach, don't hang up on God. Don't hang up on God. Because, see, that interview shows why you're needed at Jack State University. It shows it. See, a big interview like that may open the minds and the purses of some well-to-do people. It really, it really would. Really could. And I think it will. But see, only you could get this interview. All corn state were dominating the swag down there. They wasn't gonna be featured on no damn 60 minutes. Coach Maynard. It's charismatic. They weren't going to put that brother on 60 Minutes. Buddy Pugh from the MEAC is a coaching legend. They weren't going to put that brother on 60 Minutes. Since you were able to go into the NFL, play for the Atlanta Falcons and dominate, play for the San Francisco 49ers, win a Super Bowl, go to the Dallas Cowboys, most... Uh, Valuable team in all of sports and star there and win a Super Bowl. Oh, and also play baseball, play in the World Series. Till so you were able to do all those things and your ass got all the swag in the world. You got what it takes to be on 60 Minutes. So a media opportunity like that can change things. See, see, again, civil rights tie in. Dr. King and them knew how to masterfully use the media to highlight our plight so that well to do uh, people, no matter what race they were, well to do people and well meaning people can see what's going on. And then if they so choose hell. But God damn it, you can't help if you don't know what the fuck is going on. What you did in that interview helped folk understand what's going on who may not even know. 
but only you can do that. Only you could do that. Hopefully others can do it going forward, but right now, that was you. Now, Jackson State has challenges, as it was mentioned in, in, in the, uh, the interview. Jack State does have challenges. All HBCUs have challenges that these big Power 5 schools don't have. And I know you said that you don't get into politics. You only get into people. But, Coach, the problems, the challenges that Jackson State has, the problems, the challenges that all HBCUs have, the problems, the challenges that black people have, Shit, that's because of politics, though. So you are into politics because if you're trying to address those problems, then you're trying to address the conditions that cause the problem. That's politics. The water crisis with politics. All the bullshit about funding uh, the university. That's politics. So you are into politics. Because politics is life. But here's the thing about it. Again, let's go back to God. And your mission. God damn the politicians like you. The politicians like you, coach. Shit, I'm just perusing on Twitter. And I see uh, some senator from the Mississippi State House. And now he talking about he a fan of yours now. He might be a fan of Jack State now. These folks like you. You can get into some rooms with some of these politicians who control the budgets and all that kind of stuff that other coaches, they ain't going to be able to get in no room, coach. And that's politics. When you got what it takes to be a masterful polit politician to help your people. When the interviewer asked you about Travis choosing Jack State, you very astutely pointed out that what Travis was going to do is normal. That's a quote from you. You said, that's been done. What, what he was going to do is normal. That's been done. You know, a big-time recruit goes to one of these big conferences and stuff. That's been done. Well, God damn it, Coach, I can say that about you. That's what I'm saying about you. It's been done before that a coach goes to a small school and rises up and goes to a bigger school. That's been done countless times. That's the game. You start out at a smaller school, you prove yourself there, and then you move on to bigger school. Name the coach. That's, that, that's what they do. And see, we know a lot about that here in Mississippi because a lot of people don't look at any of our schools as destination jobs. That includes Mississippi State and Ole Miss and Southern Miss. That includes them. Folks don't look at Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Southern Miss as destination jobs. Let alone Jackson State, Alcorn, uh, Mississippi Valley State, Delta State. They, they, they don't look at our schools like that, okay? Our state doesn't have Alabama and Notre Dame and USC and Ohio State, okay? So we're, we're used to being used. Take my other school. Take my other school, Southern Miss. We had a basketball coach come down there named Larry Eustation. He got caught up in a bunch of shit. He had had previous success in the Big 12, but he had a scandal out there, took some time off, came to Southern Miss to get his reputation back. When he got his reputation back, he dipped on our motherfucking ass. Take Larry Fedora, okay? Larry Fedora came down to Southern Miss, did an incredible job. We were winning, okay? We're looking very different from how we're doing right now. We're winning. What did he do? Dip out on us, went to North Carolina. Now his ass coaching uh, with USFL or something like that. Uh, Dan Mullen. Did Mississippi State like that? Mississippi State in the SEC. He didn't give a fuck. He used Mississippi State and went on the floor the way he really wanted to be. 
and now his ass doing TV. So we, we, we use the folks using us as a stepping stone to get somewhere else. That has been done. That's normal. Coach, if you're going to be a change agent, you have to be abnormal. There's nothing normal about uh, a mission given to you by God. A lot of time, those missions are very abnormal. And it calls for you to be extraordinary. So you ain't got to entertain these folks. That's normal. That's been done. And you won't be a fool not to entertain them. You won't be a fool. You say, I'm a man of faith. And, I, and I'm following my calling. Okay. Yes, the facilities. Oh, they point out that they got uh, uh, locker rooms that look like uh, airplanes or oh, some shit they were saying. And you know, these schools they got hyperbolic chambers. They got uh, uh, underwater this and all that kind of shit. I'm telling y'all right now that, that all that shit. That's bells and whistles. That shit overrated. You know that, Coach. You know that now, Coach. Let me tell you how you know that. You ain't had none of that shit in no Fort Myers, Florida, Coach. You ain't had none of that shit, Coach. You might have had some of that shit once you got to Florida State, but in Fort Myers, you ain't had none of that shit, Coach. But you still ran a 4-2 for breakfast. You still ran a 4-2 for breakfast. Bobby Bowden ain't teach you how to run no 4-2, Coach. You went to Tallahassee with that. You brought that from the hood to Tallahassee. Okay. So you know it's overrated. I know it's overrated. But we need you to drive that point home to our young men and to our women who get enamored by that shit and then they go play for folks who don't give a fuck about them. Most recently, we saw an example of that with, with Tuberville. You know the former Auburn coach who up here basically equating all black people with criminals and denouncing the need for reparations and shit. I'm sure you heard about that. Had to come across the timeline, coach. I know you say you don't do politics, but again, that's just life. That motherfucker used to coach black boys. How was he able to get black boys? Because of the bells and whistles and the facilities and all that shit and the under the table money. But now with NIL, shit, guys ain't got to just get under the table money. They should be able to come to Jackson University under your leadership and goddamn be getting to the money. Your son getting to the money. Travis getting to the money. Uh, I think my young boy Arbor then got some deals now. Guys can come get some money. But in terms of all that other fancy shit fuck do we have a bench press do we have a squat rack give me a bench press give me a squat rack give me a track for us to get some conditioning hell i might not need a track give me a road it's a road out there let's go out there and run on this fucking road let's run up this hill let's go get it done give me some dogs and give me a bench press a squat rack and god damn it watch us go whoop some ass I know that works because kids from underfunded K-12 systems be kicking kids' asses from privileged backgrounds and privileged communities all throughout America. We see it. Every Friday night, you can see it. A lot of these four and five star boys that go to college and be great, shit, they were already great coming from the hood. But see, this thing about celebrity, what I just said is real as fuck. But folks ain't gonna hear it the same as they're gonna hear it from you, coach. 
So we need you to drive that kind of point home. So we can keep getting the Travis's to bring their talents back where they pre- appreciate it. Not only as ball players, but as men. You were right to call on rich people to fund the program at Jack State. It's something I've been talking about. Rich black folks especially got to step the fuck up. Rich people of whatever color should step up. Again, I ain't been turning out no money for nobody. Uh, that's real. All money ain't good money, so I ain't going to turn out no money for nobody that's real. You know what I'm talking about? Real ones of, of any shape. But it, uh, I can't expect other people to care about us more than we care about ourselves. Okay? But you plugged in with every fucking body. You got Troy Aikman coming through. You got Walmart that came through. You got Affleck. You got the rappers coming through. You got Diddy dropping the bag. You got Ja Rule dropping. You the guy to make it happen. And we've seen this like before at HBCUs. I just took my mom to Tuskegee University. The school that was founded by Booker T. Washington. One of the first buildings I saw when I got there was a building named Carnegie Hall. So I asked the tour guide, I said, is that named after Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest people in the history of our country? You know, a steel tycoon from the, I was about to say from the (laughs) age of monopolies, but hell, we we living in an age of monopolies right now too here. Uh, But, and she told me, hell, there's another, she told me, yes, it was named after Andrew Carnegie. And she said, there was another building on campus named after John D. Rockefeller. Booker T. Washington was able to get the richest men in America to open up their pockets, to open up their checkbooks, to open up their purse, and drop a bag on Tuskegee. She said those were two of the school's biggest, biggest, biggest benefactors from back then. Booker T was a change agent. Do I agree with everything Booker said, did, everything? No. But I I understand he was a change agent. He was able to move the needle for his people. You're able to do that. You're able to do that. Another way that you being at Jack State University uh can help fund the program is by increasing enrollment at the at the university we see it happening again i was on twitter y'all didn't follow me on twitter i'm active over there that's why i'm most active follow me over there okay on twitter y'all see the you better follow me down in the description but i was on twitter and this tweet came across my timeline from this sister so i bookmarked it Cause I said, see, this is the shit I'm talking about right here. And I don't want to share it with y'all right now. Okay. This tweet is from a sister by the name of Shanita Chrysler. Now I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right, Queen. Okay. All right. This from several days ago. But she said, great morning. It's a great day to be a JSU Tiger. Because of all this trending, my inbox been blowing up for potential new civil engineering student prospects. Meeting a few today. I love it. Go Tigers. Why was Jack State trending all that week? Was it trending because of academics? Was it trending because of the engineering program? It was trending because of fucking football. It was trending because of the Alabama State and and, and, and uh, Jackson State little mini beef. It was trending because of Coach Prime, you coach. Because of you versus Eddie Robinson and the who is swag, I am swag. That's why I was trending. But because of that, you got young people who want to come to the institution to major in engineering. Young people who want to come there. That ain't got shit to do with football. Engineering has nothing to do with football. But kids don't just pick a school because of their major. They pick a school because of the environment of the vibe of the experience.
They, the vibe, the mood, the atmosphere that you are helping to create at Jack State University can bring in more of these kind of kids who can come to Jack State because they want to be a part of the overall vibe, but they can come there, get a great education, and go out into the world and make some real money. Uh, hopefully, base level, upper middle class money. What happens with that? Now you got these kids enjoyed their time at Jack State. They go get good jobs or they go start creating jobs. What do they do? They put that money back into the institution. So now you ain't got to be asking this, this, that, and the third. Now you got motherfuckers just like the other school alums who got the bag. And they were attracted to the school because of the damn football program. That's what being a change agent is about. You affect everything. Now, I heard a lot of folks talking about you got to take care of your assistants. Heard Duke, Deuce McAllister was talking about that during the telecast of the Bethune Cookman game. Uh, and then you got other folks out here talking to, like Robert Griffin III, talking about your name ought to be, you know, top on folks list and all that kind of shit. He talking out both sides of his mouth, trying to show love to Shadu and show love to Jack State, while also saying you out of league jackson you know what I'm talking about? you got all this stuff but the refrain is you got money already coach but you got to take care of your assist but again eh? then wealthy folks can help boost the assistance pay that's one two jackson state could be the premier launching point for assistance That's how Nick Saban does it. Folks come over there and bust their ass for Nick Saban. And off of that success, they go on to do other shit. College football is littered with his assistants. Look at Kirby Smart. Look at Jimbo over there. You see it all the time. He keep rolling through assistants. So, your mission may not be their mission. Your mission, based on your, what you said, you said God called collect, and you accepted the charges. So your mission may not be their mission. Maybe they didn't get that same call. So what you do, you let them come Jack State, they bust their ass, let them prove themselves, and then let them go get a goddamn job somewhere. And then you bring in the next. Who want to uh, uh, coach some of the best players any FCS program ever going to get? Because at the end of the day, it's you. The, the, the staff does a hell of a job of recruiting. I know they on the, the grind, texting folks and doing every, all this kind of stuff as well. But you the one that closed the deal. So even if you lose an assistant or two or whatever that goes on to take a job to try to get more money since you already rich, they might want to try to get rich as well. They go take a big guy. It's you. They can seal the deal with recruiting. You're going to kick the players coming through. So if, if the young, hungry assistants want to come learn the game from you and, and, and coach some good players, let that be the model. But you, you don't let the whole thing with the assistance pay make you deviate from your mission, Coach. That would be like Jesus saying, oh, uh, well, I'm bringing a lot of heat on, 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 on my home as the disciples, you know what I'm talking about? It's harder, things, it's harder for them. They down with me. And, you know, I'm making life, their life harder. I might well just give in to the Romans, you know, to my, stop trying to change things, you know, just go along to get along, you know, to my. I mean, Jesus probably could have been very, very wealthy in his time if he chose not to shake things up. He just went along with everything and, and he could have told Judas and Peter and all them cats. Hey man, we gonna man, let's tone down on all this, man. We 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 pissing these folks off. 
know, kind of like you pissing off, you pissed off Nick Saban and what that's why he said what he said. Okay. But just in terms of hey, it could have been lucrative for him back then. If he just went and worked for the Romans. All the disciples would have been on. Everybody would have been stupid. They would have had the limited edition sandals. <laughs> Top of the line garments. Robes on fleet, right? But he didn't do that. He didn't deviate from the mission. Dr. King didn't deviate from the mission. Because uh, uh, it made life hard for his uh, friends or his family. He chose to go where he would catch the most smoke. He chose to go where it was hard, and his potters were down with him. Abernathy was right there with him. Coretta was right there with him. Where it was tough. And they knew he was going to catch hell in Montgomery. Knew they were going to catch hell in Selma. Knew when you come over here to Mississippi, you're going to catch hell. Went where it was tough. So if some folks can't handle that, hey, right now they can't get paid like they deserve, let them bust their ass and prove that they, they can move on up. But otherwise, find somebody that shares your vision, that has your character, that shares your mission. Put them on the stand. I'll give you one more example. Again, I mentioned Ali. Think about Muhammad Ali. When that, when that man did not take that step to go into the military, that not only hurt him financially, that helped, that hurt, excuse me, everybody that depended on his person. That hurt his trainer. That hurt uh, both Dean and Brown. That hurt uh, the, the, the sponsoring group. That he would work with. Hell, it hurt them probably when he became a black Muslim. He won the heavyweight title and shocked everybody that came out of black Muslim, changed name from Cassidy State Muhammad Ali. He didn't look at it and say, hey, man, we're going to make less money. I'm going to get less marketing opportunities. I'm going to get this. So, you know, so I ain't going to do all that, you know, because y'all been down. No, he said, fuck that. I got a mission. I know who I am. He said, I know God, I know the real God, and I want justice. That's what he said at 22 years old. And those who really loved him, those who really supported his vision and his mission, stay right there with him. Don't forget this, Coach. And I think this is lost. This is getting lost in a lot of this talk. Don't forget what the great philosopher Mike Jones once said. He said, back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. Go look it up. He said that the great philosopher Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. He said that. Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. They wanted you to prove it, coach. They wanted you to prove it. You tried to get them jobs before you came to Jackson State, but they said no. They wanted you to prove it. You, you. Who in the hell wouldn't think you know how to recruit? Who in the hell wouldn't think that as a football coach? Again, because football is, the, the coaching in football is very different for a head coach, especially if you're not one of them play calling head coach. It's really managerial. It's really CEO type of shit. So who the hell would think you don't, you can't make some hires that you ain't got connects that you couldn't find good, a good offensive coordinator, a good defensive coordinator, a good running back, coach, wide receiver, coach, offensive line coach, that you can't get all these guys and put something together. Why would they doubt you coach? I've given examples in other videos. Maybe you didn't see the old coach, but I've said before, like in the NBA, Steve Nash had never coached any goddamn well. They gave that man the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Dane Harden at the time. Steve Kerr had never been a, a coach anywhere. They gave that man, they took the job from Mark Jackson and gave it to Steve Kerr. 
But you, sir, and that's in the pros, but you, sir, at the college level, they say it proves it. Back then, they didn't want you. Now you're hot. They all on your coat. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. Because, of course, the movie, the movie is to stay at Jackson State. The interviewer kind of alluded to that. That's what's box office. That's what's prime time. Your name is Prime, Coach. Shit. You stay at Jackson State University. This shit a movie. And you ain't going to be able to fit this into no two hours. This going to have to be one of them goddamn Jackson specials. It's going to have to be like the Temptations. It's going to be like Roots, where your ass had to sit down. On a, uh, they give you one part per week in prime time. That's the movie. That's what people want to see. Don't nobody want to see that shit over there at all. But nobody want to see you at all. But what the fuck? Where the, where the, where the move at? Nobody want to see you at Georgia Tech, Florida State. Nobody want to see that. Where's the change agent in that? Where is it? We've seen black men get those jobs before. And we've seen black men get fucked over in them jobs before. See Herm Elwes? With the folk were colluding against him to get his ass fired? We see in the NFL, black coaches winning Super Bowl still ain't been uh, uh, changing the game. We saw Tony Dungeon, Levin Smith, two black coaches in the Super Bowl together. It wasn't an influx of black coaches after them boys coached. We see uh, uh, coaches at the coordinator position, uh, uh, Eric Bieniemy with the Kansas City Chiefs doing his motherfucking thing along, you know, alongside Andy Reid. Nobody, ain't nobody trying to get that manager. You see, Ty Bowles finally got the job once Brady forced uh, Bruce Arians to retire. And that's in the pros. That shit eh. ain't no movie there. Ain't no movie there. At Jackson State, that's the movie. That's the movie, coach. That's the challenge, coach. That's the mission. That's the mission. Coach, you said that God called collect and you accepted the charges. Well, I'm a spiritual man myself, coach. I'm deeply spiritual. And the God I believe in Got that unlimited plan. The God I believe in can talk to your ass every day, all day. So if God called you, don't hang up on God. Okay? Because what he called you to do wasn't no one. It wasn't a temporary thing. It wasn't a short thing. The conditions that that the, the 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 things that led to the challenges of Jackson State University, Alcorn State University, Mississippi Valley State University, Southern University, FAMU, Grambling, the, the 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 things that led to the challenges at these universities have been going on since sixteen nineteen. And I don't think God called you for just a quick talk. So don't hang up on God, coach. If God called you, coach, don't hang up on God. You stay on that line. Put it on something. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?